Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Andrews, AKA the All-American Driver. Today we have a very exciting opportunity to meet a buddy of mine at the racetrack who just bought the Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Packing up some camera gear. We are taking the, nope, Tesla. <laughs> 61 degrees here in Florida. It is cooling off. All right, well, we made it to the firm. Hey, good morning. Good morning. I'm just here to watch, okay. take some photos. Tesla game here. Nice. All right, so we made it, I've parked. I do not see my buddy Eugene with the dark horse quite yet. Maybe he's running late. I'm gonna shoot him a text. However, I'm just gonna walk around and see what cars are here. Definitely the hero car, the C6Z06. I don't know why anyone is screwing around with anything else. This really is like the best car for pretty much anything. God, and they do look sweet. Miata, 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 Miata. Alfa Romeo. Miata, 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 Miata. He's with the C5Z right here. Miata, Miata, another Miata. I know I've been complaining about the weather here in Florida, but something must have happened because I woke up and it's like low 60s. All my tire pressure lights are on like because the pressure is so low, but. It's crazy, it's cold. I should have wore like a hoodie or something here. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. All right, so here we go. Mustang Dark Horse. Strangely enough, I have the key to this car. We will be driving it, see how it does on track, autocross uh, specifically. Funny story about this color. You guys remember I had the Grabber Blue GT350 before I got the GT350R. You know, I think that Ford has changed the color just a little bit. This actually looks darker than uh, my 2017 GT350 in Grabber Blue. But let's take a look at this thing. You guys are seeing this with me for the first time. I have never seen an S650 in person, let alone a dark horse. So I'm just gonna go and kind of give my honest thoughts. Okay, so right here with all this front end stuff, there's a lot going on here. And I think because everything is black, it kind of hides some of the detail. What is this? Is this just a nice plastic? Yeah, these are cool. The headlights are cool. Um, I don't know why they didn't put the dark horse badge there. Um, but uh, that's fine. This sort of looks like the Camaro to me. Um, yeah, I'm so used to seeing giant splitters on, on Mustangs that this looks a little pushed into me. He's already having some fun, it looks like. All right, so we got Mustang Dark Horse right here. Very cool. Cool little Mustang right here on the windshield. I don't remember that on my car. Uh, looks like we got the Brembos on here. I like that they're in the same color as uh, the car. That's pretty nice. I don't hate the Dark Horse badge. It's got some cool texture on one side of it. Interesting. Um, again, I'm used to the big side splitters here, so this is just matte. Very similar, very similar design here. You know, I, I do miss the the side vents on the GT350. It's 
got a lot of cool stuff, but you know, maybe it could be just a tad wider here. I assume this is coming stock on Pirelli P0s, which is a big change from the Cup 2s that the GT350R comes with. A little wing here. Looks like it's finished in the same stuff as the mirrors. It's kind of cool. It's got this double lip thing here. Tail lights. That's a it's a crazy angle what they did there. We got the dark horse badge. Again, same type of texture, little backup camera, that's all fine. Exhaust tips look pretty big. I love that Eugene has got a car seat in this car. Let's see if we can pop the trunk here and see what's going on. It's just kind of your standard Mustang key. It would have been cool to put the Dark Horse logo right here in my opinion, um, but just kind of the average key. Oh, it's heavy. The upgraded audio here and just the normal trunk that we all know. Okay, we got some blue stitching here. That all looks nice. Blue stitching. Whoa, we got a lot going on on the screens here. A lot going on here. So Eugene is basically daily driving this car. So you can see we've got the automatic here. Uh, we got that little... Um, drift brake very interesting the screen is big it's very big uh, let's see here let's get a startup on this thing All right, so I imagine when we cycle through all the modes, what are the modes? Here's a horse. Ah, and then I guess that's some modes there. I'll be honest, I'm not an expert with this uh, car. Ah, uh, here we go, mode selector. Okay, kind of cool. Kind of cool. We'll go ahead and shut this thing off. We got a lot of little sounds. Um, sure. Got a lot of little sounds. Overall, I mean, the cabin feels very similar, obviously, to my Shelby GT350R. We've got some extra little things here I don't remember my car having. Um, you know, we do have some nice textured, how can I show this? We do have some nice textured stuff here on the door. The blue stitching continued. Pretty good room here in the back seat. You know, he's running a car seat in here, which is awesome. Uh, standard cup holders, glove box. I think we've probably got wireless charging here, which is an upgrade. Uh, but overall feels like the uh, S550 more or less the size of it. Let's see. These are all power seats uh, So I'm not quite used to that in my Mustang here um, Definitely not as aggressive bolstering as the GT350 R seats or GT350 seats in general I really really like the GT350 R seats how they look and how they felt um, For a daily driver though, maybe if multiple people are driving a car like this uh, I could see how the comfort, I think these are the comfort seats. Uh, I assume they're heated and cooled. I don't know for sure. I don't see any buttons. Um, 
but I could see how these would be good for a daily driver. You know, but Eugene, the owner of this car, I mean, he's at the track all the time. So I'm gonna ask him why not get the most aggressive spec, or maybe this is all he could get. So let's pop the hood and uh, see how the engine has changed. Okay, factory hood struts. I will say that is a plus from the GT350. So right off the bat, we can see these massive dual throttle bodies. That looks cool. This carbon fiber cover, I will say looks cool. The Mustang Dark Horse strut tower bar, uh, that looks cool. Uh, everything looks actually pretty cool. This, this is cool. You know, I wonder if there's gonna be companies that are making big twin turbos, you know, all that for this car. You can see here the vents. Just a plastic piece on the GT350. I think this is a carbon composite piece, so slightly different there. Uh, you can see the sharpness of the headlights here. But uh, yeah, this is kind of seems like the highlight here. And the, the cover is nice. The cover is nice. Now, I will say that Ford has done some tricky marketing when they talk about this car. You know, they always say, hey, you know, the Mustang Dark Horse, this is the most track-oriented, track-capable 5.0 Mustang ever. You know, obviously, by saying 5.0, they're excluding the GT350, the GT500, you know, so even though this is the new new, the best of the new, even Ford will not say that this is better than the old. So, I don't know exactly why you would buy a Dark Horse over a GT350, specifically GT350R, because they're more or less around the same price. Obviously, you probably get a better warranty with this. The 5.0 motor is a little bit more proven. It doesn't explode. Uh, but I can't wait to ask Eugene why he just didn't get a GT350. And you guys actually asked me that question. I posted on my Instagram that I was gonna be spending some time with the Dark Horse and asking you guys if you guys had any questions. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, every once in a while I'll do something like this. When Eugene gets back from the track walk, we will sit down and we're gonna ask him uh, all those questions you guys had. So there it is. I can't wait to experience this thing on track, drive it. I've never driven a 5.0 GT Mustang, like this, the S550, I never drove one. I definitely have never driven an automatic Mustang. So, you know, while I am kind of a, a I don't wanna say an expert in tracking Mustangs or anything, I do have a lot of experience with the GT350 platform on track. And uh, so I'm gonna do my best to kind of compare these two cars, but they're not, they're not really comparable. My first impressions of the car are it looks pretty good. Uh, the only thing I think it's really kind of missing is a little bit, you know, the side looks just a little flat to me. You know, the GT350 had that nice uh, scoop in it that came like this that side vent that was really cool everything else looks everything else looks pretty good the the side profile is nice obviously he's already got the thing tinted grabber blue is a cool color i don't mind the rear end i don't mind the front end I'm not sure I'm a big fan of the hood graphics sticker things. I like that they say Dark Horse, but I don't know that it needs to be these big black. This almost reminds me of that Punisher helmet thing that people do that I'm not really a big fan of. I also don't understand why some of this front end is gloss black and some of it is matte black. So you've got matte up here, paint and then you have gloss black matte gloss black matte black i mean it's not completely black but it's not you know it's pretty dark so the gloss black to me kind of ah, i don't know i don't know you know the the dark horse is like this uh this, the Dark Horse is kind of like this little statement of, of kind of like 
dark, obviously darkness, aggression, things like that. The gloss black accents kind of, kind of are a little distracting to me, I, honestly. It makes the front end look a little, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's too much, it's too much. It's a different black on the hood, then a different black on this section, then you got the gloss black, which is a different black. It's a lot going on. None of this stuff really matters. The only thing that matters is how the car drives. So let's get this thing on track, get some real world impressions. I think that this is the first time Eugene has raced this car. And I will say he's a driver, okay? He sold a C7 Grand Sport that he was racing a lot. I met him down in Daytona and uh, he was faster than me. I was in the S2000, he was faster than me there. We came here to the firm, my home track, he was faster than me here. I was in the S2000, but he was faster than me. So he knows how to drive. And the Grand Sport, if I'm correct, was an auto also. So he should be able to drive this thing pretty good. And then we're gonna take it out and drive it. I'll be able to get some actual impressions. a little bit but because the tires are tires cold. are cold yeah, yeah, yeah they're not the right tires but she breaks so freaking good i need to get used to it car feels great man i'm a little bit scared yet you know <laughs> i i was really cautious in this but this thing is yeah love it yeah bro cool wow all right so first run in the dark horse it feels great car feels really good it feels planted um the power's good the braking's good the turn in is good it feels great, and he's a good driver. Um, ah, yeah, pretty impressed. Okay, so I posted on my Instagram a couple questions. Now that we have the owner here, let's just go over these things. So, first question was, does it look good? I think it looks pretty good. I, I okay, so I like it. Uh, I posted on uh, Facebook, on Mustang Group, 
uh, the card like, oh, I got the dark horse, you know, so to see the impressions. And I told the people that I got rid of the C7, I got a lot of hate. Like, I felt like I went to um, a Corvette group because everybody hated that I got rid of C7. Nobody likes the dash. Everybody calls it uh, trying, trying to be, try try to be Tesla or trying to be Tesla. Is it, is a, it is a big screen. Yeah, yeah, but honestly, I like tech in the cars. That's the first thing I look at. So I love it, I love it. And outside, uh, you get a lot of people taking pictures. Like even today in the morning, uh, when I was fill, filling up with gas, uh, the guy came to, to me, he's like, oh, is that your car? He started asking questions. I was like, oh, I like it, like, how, 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 how does it drive? I'm like, I don't know, I'm taking it to the track right now. So he actually followed me on Instagram just to see it, uh, the, the videos. So, nice. Well, I, I love it. Um, the color wasn't my choice, but yeah. It wasn't your choice. It wasn't my choice. So that's the only car they had at the dealership that I could order. And that was the only car, but I love it. Yeah. You know, it's pretty good. Okay, next question. Um, why would anyone get that over a GT 350R? <laughs> All right, couple of things, and I think that was his idea. He asked me the same question. So, the first thing is, uh, this was a anniversary gift for my my wife. So she's a big fan of Mustangs, but she doesn't know how to drive manual. So Dark Horse uh, comes automatic. I love it. We just tested it. It's freaking amazing. It, it is. Yeah, it, it runs good. It yeah, drives good. So, shifts good. So that was one thing. Second thing is, uh, I don't know. Just I, I really wanted the tech and I like the dark horse. And when I saw the announcement, I was like, all right, that's going to be my next car. GT350, it's a nice car. I don't have anything against it, but I think dark horse is better. <laughs> I don't know. In some ways, maybe. Maybe yeah, as a maybe. daily driver, yeah. family car, like he's got, he had a baby seat in here. You know, obviously you can't have that in the GT350R. Yeah. Um, and you're right. You got way more tech yeah. than they do in the GT350s. Right. I mean, they still have, you know, analog gauges and everything, just Apple CarPlay basic stuff, but you got all sorts of goodies up here yeah. and that you're still figuring out. Yeah, exactly. You know, which is cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Next question. Did you pay markup? Uh, no. So that's the reason why I got this car. Um, I called five, five di different dealerships. Four of them wanted 20 over MSRP. So I was like, no, thank you. And I got lucky. This car was 15 minutes away from my house. Mm. So the dealership is like 15 minutes away. I called them. They said, uh, they said it's not available. It's already reserved. So you cannot get it. Next day, they called me back. It's like, they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just give us a deposit. I'm like, okay, so what's going to be the markup? They're like, nothing. Just pay MSRP and you're good to go. So next second, I asked them to send me the uh, the link to place, place a deposit. And that's it. That's how I reserved it. it. It was supposed to be here on the 5th of October. It came here on the on 28th. So I got it a week early and I went to the dealer with... We've done a test drive, filled all the documents, and yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah. This thing only has just over a thousand miles, so he broke it in yesterday, driving down to Miami and back, yeah. Yeah. and then he's already at the track. Love that. Um, I got a couple questions on, why, like, why the dark horse doesn't have a time at the Nurburgring or VIR or something yet. Who knows? I mean, it takes a lot of money to send a car over there to rent the Nurburgring for a day. I think um, Ford is trying to make money so that they sell all of them so they don't have enough cars to send to Nurburgring. It's possible. Yeah, it's <laughs> possible. Uh, would like comparisons to the GT350R. That's yeah. your question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm so used to the really high revving naturally aspirated flat plane crank voodoo engine and so this thing the sound of it it sounds a little bit muted to me not in a bad way but the the gt350r was like raspy like you know real raspy and also the gt350r didn't have as much torque really as this thing i mean when this thing like leaves the line and just like instantly coming on the gas there's like a decent amount of response there with the gt350r you really got to wind it out um, I will say, I mean, there's tons of power in the top RPM range, but it's a different type of power band in this car. The GT350R, just from the passenger seat, it feels a little bit lighter. It's turning in, but I had the car aligned. I was on a better tire. I had aero on the car. I can't say that for sure. It feels a little bit lighter, but this thing feels great. It feels planted. It feels heavy. 
It, I mean, it you can feel it the does. weight moving around, especially coming from the Alpha 4C. I'll tell you, everything feels heavy compared <laughs> to that. You know, is this thing faster than the R? Who knows? I mean, you'd have to come to a track day with similar drivers running both times, you know, but it's a great car. It's a great Mustang. I was telling them earlier, it's funny that Ford markets this as the most track oriented 5.0 Mustang. Yeah. You know, so they exclude the, the 350, 350s. whatever reason. Yeah. You know, they're both cool cars for different reasons. And the GT 350R really wouldn't have fit your criteria for buying a car anyway. So it, it doesn't really matter. And GT 350s can blow up. Okay. So there's <laughs> that. Uh, cool. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So, uh, Cool, I'll take it for a drive and then whatever. Right. Yeah, there thank you, you so go. much, man. No problem. Yeah. Have fun with it's it. It's awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first time in an S650, first time in a Mustang 5.0. Obviously, first time in a dark horse, first time in an automatic Mustang. So there are a lot of firsts for me right now. I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna put this thing in manual mode and I'm gonna put it in sport mode. Let's see here, mode, normal, sport. a dual clutch car especially on downshifting there's a little bit of like a rev up and then the car grabs but smooth enough i'm not sure i'd want to be downshifting like crazy into a under braking into a corner God, that's too many gears for me. All right, I'm gonna go back into uh, automatic. Uh, you can tell even like kind of just rolling onto the throttle in first gear, once we got towards red line, pulled the paddle, the car was like, wasn't 100% sure what to do. That might've been me, um, who knows, but uh, the weight of this car so we're rolling at about let's just say 60 miles an hour and let's just put our foot down and see what happens right now I can't see what gear I'm in I don't think yeah I don't see what gear I'm in I'm just gonna put my foot down well one thing I've noticed is the pedal is a lot longer there's a lot more play not play but a lot more reach in the gas pedal than I'm used to and the Alfa Romeo 4C, uh, it's got floor mounted pedals. So I, I'm having to get used to it a little bit, but I can see why somebody would think this is a fantastic daily driver. And we all know that the Mustang can handle well. I mean, we saw it out on track. It felt really good. And I mean, I wasn't the one driving but uh, it felt good, felt really good. All right, let's try this one more time. I'm gonna let it shift itself and we're just gonna kind of feel, I'm gonna roll onto it. I don't need to hammer this car from a stop. Um, 
So I think we're already in second gear. Yeah. That's 80. It feels good. It feels good. It's, um, like I said, if I'm just comparing it to the Voodoo engine, um, that engine has a lot more character to it. It honestly does. Um, it builds power much differently. It feels a little bit more exciting. Again, this is an automatic and, and maybe it's faster than the manual, I'm not sure. It feels great. It, it feels great. It feels contained. It still feels contained. The GT350R felt like a wild animal at the limit. <laughs> You know, with that car, you were still getting the weight, you know, a little bit of the weight. You were getting very good braking, very good handling, all that stuff. But it still felt like a crazy little animal. This car feels controllable. You know, I could see for a family car, somebody wanted to share this car with a spouse or, you know, isn't really going to the track that often. I could see how this car would potentially be a better fit. It does sound good. It does sound great. There are a little bit of pops um, coming from this exhaust, which is nice. Let's see if I... Yeah, it, it sounds good. It sounds like a Mustang. It doesn't sound like the Voodoo engine, of course. That car, again, is just such a... It's got such a character to the sound. Um, and honestly, driving this car makes me appreciate the GT350 and GT350R specifically uh, a little bit more because um, that car was just fantastic. All right, so what a fun time with the Dark Horse. Thank you so much, Eugene, for letting me drive this thing. I'm gonna link his Instagram in the description. He is out here racing all the time. So I think that's it for me, Jason Andrews, AKA the All-American Driver. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you got something out of it, consider hitting that subscribe button. I got parts in the garage for the Alfa Romeo 4C. I got some thoughts with the Tesla. We got a lot to talk about, but I will see you guys in the next video.